everybody. I am Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astvat Satrian from Yerevan, Armenia. And so you, dear friends, you're on Dr. Y channel. So take your pa papers, take your pens to make the notes. It's absolutely necessary to make the notes when you're listening, actually re-listening these videos. And today's question is all about duodenitis. So what is duodenitis? Duodenitis is a medical condition that refers to inflammation or irritation of the lining of the duodenum, what is the first part of the small intestine. Duodenum is located just below the stomach and pace, plays an important role in the digestion of food by receiving partially digested food from the stomach and mixing it with the digestive juices from the pancreas and liver. Duodenitis can be caused via by a variety of factors, including infections, medications, alcohol abuse, smoking, stress, and surgical medical conditions such as Crohn's disease and celiac disease. The most common symptoms of duodenitis, of course, is abdominal pain, uh, also nausea, vomiting, bloating, and feeling of fullness after eating. Actually, the treatment of the duodenitis depends on the underlying cause and may include medications to reduce inflammation, antibiotics to treat infections, lifestyle changes to avoid irritants such as alcohol and smoking, and in some cases, surgery. So, it's okay as an answer, but I see. So, continuing of the question, and uh, let's start with etiology. No, normally, in the beginning of quite enough, but who knows? So etiology of duodenitis can be multifactorial, meaning that there can be several factors that contribute to development of the inflammation or irritation of the, in the lining of the duodenum. Uh, uh, some causes are infections, bacterial, viral, or parasitic infections, infections can cause inflammation in the duodenum. Helicobacter pylori is a type of bacteria that commonly causes duodenitis. Actually, duodenitis is the same history of peptic ulcer eh? or gastritis. Uh, medications, certain medications such as non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and SAIDs, aspirin and corticosteroids can irritate the lining of the duodenum and cause inflammation. Alcohol abuse, ex excessive al alcohol consumption can irritate the lining of the stomach and duodenum and lead to inflammation. Smoking can increase and increase the production of stomach acid and reduce the ability of the stomach to protect itself from irritation, which can lead to inflammation in the duodenum. Stress, chronic stress, can weaken the immune system and increase the risk of infections, which can contribute to duodenitis. We know that stress is the most common cause of the weakening of the immune system. Medical conditions, certain medical conditions such as Crohn's disease, celiac disease, peptic ulcer disease can cause inflammation in the duodenum. Genetic predisposition, yes, some people may have a genetic predisp predisposition to the denitis or other gastrointestinal disorders. It's important to identify <coughs> Uh, most clearly, more uh, in, uh, if it's possible, of course, the underlying cause of the odonitis in order to provide appropriate treatment and prevent complications. So, uh, pathogenesis. No, pathogenesis of the odonitis involves a complex interplay of factors can lead to inflammation or irritation. Uh, in the lining of the duodenum, the imprecise mechanisms can vary depending on the Underlying cause of the condition. However, some general, you know, some general uh, pathogenic mechanisms that may be involved in duodenitis include uh, direct damage to the duodenal mucosa. This can be caused by various factors such as infections, medications, alcohol, smoking, which can damage the mucosa layer that protects the duodenal lining from acid and other irritants. Alteration in the composition of gut microbiota, micro, microbiota, changes in the gut microbiota can 
uh, lead to overgrowth of harmful bacteria that can cause inflammation and irritation in the duodenum. Immune dysfunction, in some cases duodenitis, may be caused by abnormal immune response uh, to the lining of duodenum, leading to chronic inflammation. So-called oxidative stress, this is a state where there is an imbalance between uh, free radicals and antioxidants in the body. Oxidative stress can damage the duodenal mucosa and contribute to inflammation. And actually genetic susceptibility. As we said, mentioned above, certain genetic factors may increase the risk of developing duodenitis or other gastrointestinal disorders. The pathogenesis of duodenitis can be complex and multifactorial. Identifying the underlying cause of duodenitis is important in order to develop effective treatment strategies and prevent complications. And so, when you find questions like this, my, my friend, the clinic, oh, ancient tradition, we understand the clinical signs and symptoms. So, the symptoms and signs of duodenitis can vary depending on the severity of and, and, and underlying cause of the condition. But we have some common symptoms and signs. Of course, the first of all, it's abdominal pain. So, this is the most common cause of the, 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 the symptom, not cause. Sorry, the most common clinical symptom of duodenitis. The pain is usually located in upper abdomen and may be described as burning, gnawing, or aching sensation. The pain may be relieved by eating, eating, or taking antacids. Nausea and vomiting. Some people with duodenitis, with duodenitis, may experience nausea and vomiting, particularly after eating. Bloating and gas. Duodenitis can cause bloating, gas, and the feeling of fullness after eating. After a small amount of the eating, of the meal. Loss of appetite. Some people with duodenitis may experience a loss of appetite or a feeling of early satiety. Weight loss. In severe cases of duodenitis, my friends, Weight loss may occur due to the reduction in food intake. Indigestion. Duodenitis can cause indigestion, which may include symptoms such as belching, heartburn, and acid reflux. Fatigue. Chronic duodenitis can lead to fatigue due to inflammation and stress of the body. Blood in, uh, in vomit or stool. In some cases, duodenitis can lead to bleeding in the digestive tract, which can cause blood in vomit or stool. It's important to note that not everyone with duodenitis may experience all, all, all mentioned above symptoms, and say some people may have no symptoms at all. Next question, so concerning duodenitis, duodenitis is a complication. So untreated or poorly managed duodenitis can lead to several compl complications. For example, peptic ulcers. Chronic inflammation in the duodenum can lead to the development of peptic ulcers, which are sores that form in lining of the stomach or duodenum. Peptic ulcers can cause significant pain and discomfort and may lead to bleeding or perforation of the digestive tract. Malabsorption. The duodenitis can interfere with the absorption of nutrients from food, which can lead to malabsorption and malnutrition over time. Obstruction. In some cases, duodenitis can cause scarring and narrowing of the duodenum, leading to an obstruction in the digestive tract. Uh, peritonitis. No rare, but happened. Severe cases of duodenitis can lead to inflammation and infection of the lining of the abnormal abdominal cavity, which is known as peritonitis. Peritonitis is a serious, very serious condition that requires urgent medical attention. And finally, as a complication, increased risk of gastrointestinal cancer. 
Chronic inflammation in the duodenum can increase the risk of developing gastrointestinal cancers such as stomach cancer or duodenal cancer. Management Treatment of duodenitis depends on the underlying cause of the condition. Uh, medications Antacides, proton pump inhibitors, H2 blockers can be used to reduce acid production and relieve symptoms of duodenitis. Actually, antibiotics may also be prescribed if the duodenitis is caused by bacterial infection or overinfection. Dietary changes, certain foods and beverages can irritate the lining of the duodenum and worsen symptoms of duodenitis. So avoiding spicy, very spicy, acidic or fatty foods. Why not? What, what's the problem with fatty foods? And reducing alcohol and caffeine intake can help reduce symptoms. Lifestyle modifications, quitting smoking, absolutely, definitely. And reducing stress can help reduce inflammation and promote healing of the duodenal lining. Of course, tre treatment of under underlying condition, treatment the cause. Though the duodenitis is caused by an underlying condition such as celiac disease or Crohn's disease, treatment of underlying condition is necessary. Actually, how to treat Crohn's disease? <laughs> it's another question. And finally, in rare cases, surgery may be necessary to remove obstructions or repair damage or to, or to the duodenum. And fi finally, silly question like a prevention. Prevention of duodenitis involving reducing, this is the same answer, eh? involves reducing of avoiding the risk factors that can lead to the condition. Some strategies, some strategies to prevent include avoiding irritants, avoiding or limiting the consumption of foods and beverages that can irritate the lining of digestive tract, such as very spicy foods, alcohol, it depends what alcohol, and caffeine, coffee. Keating smoking, absolutely. Smoking can increase the risk of developing duodenitis and other digestive disorders. Keating smoking can help reduce the risk of duodenitis and improve overall digestive health, of course. Managing the stress. Uh, <laughs> how to manage? Chronic stress can contribute to inflammation in digestive tract, increasing the risk of duodenitis. Practicing stress management techniques such as meditation, yoga, or deep breathing exercise can help reduce stress and promote digestive health. Uh, once again, treating uh, underlying condition such as Helicobacter pylori infection, another fairy tale. Uh, celiac disease or Crohn's disease can help reduce the risk of developing duodenitis. Maintaining a healthy weight, obesity and overweight can increase the risk of developing uh, digestive disorders, including duodenitis. Maintaining a healthy way through a balanced diet and regular exercise can help reduce the risk of duodenitis. Yeah. Seeking medical attention for symptoms. If uh, it's important to seek medical attention promptly, of course. Early diagnosis can, and treatment can help prevent complications and improve prognosis. So by adopting these preventive measures, the risk of developing duodenitis can be significantly reduced. Okay, my friends, that's largely enough concerning today's topic, duodenitis. See you in other lectures. Don't forget to follow and subscribe this channel. Releasing, releasing, releasing this video in podcast, in video, up to you. Releasing several times. Repeating is the mother of understanding of learning. So, see you in another lectures, and God bless you. Bye-bye.